So my name is Ian Corley. I work for Cambridge ESOL. The ESOL stands for English for Speakers of Other Languages. And we are a department of the University of Cambridge. Um, we deal specifically with English language exams, one of which is the BULATS test. Can anybody tell me what BULATS stands for? B-U-L-A-T-S. Yes, sir. Okay, business language testing service. Brilliant, yeah. Business language testing service. Okay. Um, how many languages is the BULATS test available in? Four languages. What are they, sir? Yep. Yes. German is with the Goethe Institute, yeah, and then the English test as well, yeah, good. So it's available in four languages. Do you know um, how many different parts or modes, as we call it, of the test there are? Well, there's a, there's a reading and listening test, there's a speaking test, and there's a writing test. And uh, so there are, there are four modules, as, 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 as we call them. And they're all available online, which I think is how your students take the test on the computer. They can take all those four modules together, or they can do them separately if they want, depending on, on, on the institution. Now, what's, what's very important for your students is that the BULATS test is an adaptive test. Do you know what that means? Do you know what an adaptive test is? I'm sorry. It, perfect, yeah. Could you, could you say that again so everyone could hear? Yeah, to... Exactly right, yeah. So the, the types of questions the test asks change depending on the level of the student. So for example, if they get the first question wrong, the second question will be a little bit easier. If they get that wrong, it will get easier again. If they get that right, the next one will be a little bit more difficult until it finds a balance. Now, what this means is that it's really important that the candidates, your students, try to answer every question. Because if they see a question on the screen and they don't understand, and they just simply pass without answering it, the computer system gets confused because it doesn't know, well, do they know the answer? Do they not know it? Is it too hard? Is it too easy? And the system gets confused. And if they do that too often, then it doesn't give them a mark. So it's really important that you tell your students that when they take the test, they have to attempt every question, even if they don't know the answer. And they shouldn't worry, because when they start the test, the questions are in the middle in terms of difficulty. They, they start at a sort of intermediate level. So if you've got students who are a lower level, the first two or three questions they will find very difficult. And um, they might think, oh no, this test is too hard for me, I, I can't do it. Tell them to keep going. The, the system will understand that they've got the question wrong and it will get easier for them. But if they just pass without answering the question, the system won't be able to, uh, to pick that up. Okay, so that's an important thing to tell them. It's also important to tell them that the BULATS test is recognised all over the world. In the UK, for example, it's recognised by the UK Border Agency as an entry requirement if they want to get a visa. It's also recognised by universities all over the world if they want to go and study overseas. It's also recognised by thousands of companies. I think it's recognised by around 10,000 companies now all over the world. So although they might be using their BULATS test for, for the purposes of their studies here at Sonati, they should also see that the test is important for their futures 
because if they do ever want to go and work in a in another in an, um, work for another international company, or if they have the chance to work or study overseas, then they can use the test. So it can really open doors for them. So they should really understand that they can take the, they should take the opportunity because it's a good one. Okay. So that's just a little bit of background about the the Bulat's test, and. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be having a look at the test in more detail and specifically at the types of questions that the candidates have to answer. And um, I'm also going to give you some ideas for how you can prepare additional questions or material so that they can improve their chances of passing the test. Okay, and it's going to be a practical session. I'm going to get you to, uh, to do some work as well. So I hope that's okay. And uh, let's begin. Okay. So as I mentioned uh, just now, there are three aims to this session. We're going to be looking at some self-study ideas that you can give to your, uh, your students. We call them candidates, but they're your students some activities that you could use in the classroom to supplement the, the books that you use. And also, uh, we'll spend a little bit of time looking at some other resources that we have available free for you to use in the classroom. Okay. So, there are quite a lot of resources that are available for you that you can use with Bulats. Um, the first thing I should point out is that there is a, a candidate handbook which can be downloaded from the Bulat's website. Has anybody seen it? Have you seen the handbook? No? Okay, well don't worry. Do, do have a look at it if you have a chance because it gives you information on all the different question types which appear in the test and it gives examples as well. So it's quite good to familiarise yourselves with the kinds of questions that candidates will have to face when they take the exam. On the Bulat's website, there are also some sample question papers that you can download, which is good practice. That They come with sound files as well, so that you can practice listening activities in the classroom too. They're all available for free. There's a, a demo of the computer test that they can try, which is on the website too. It doesn't give them a score, it's, but it does show them what the questions are, how the questions work. And in addition to the Bulat's website, we've now recently launched two more websites, which I'll give you the details of later. One of them is a teacher resource website, and one is a student resource website. And they also have lots of free materials. Everything's free that you can download and you can use in the classroom if you want to. OK. I should also point out that if at any point I speak too quickly or you have a question that I've not answered, please just put your hand up. I'm happy to answer questions at any point. OK. So, first of all, I'd like to start with some, with some tips and some ideas uh, that you can give to your students for how that they should study. First of all is that we always say that little and regularly is better than trying to cram in a three or four hour session for an exam. So you should tell your students that they should try and do a little bit of study every day, or every couple of days if they can, rather than trying to wait until the end of their course just before they take the exam, because they're not going to learn that way. So little and regularly is always the best. They should also try and follow up all the sources of information that they can find. So for example, uh, if they're doing some studies based around um, texts taken from newspapers or magazines, then you should encourage them to go onto the internet and try to, to read articles in English, download the English language newspapers, 
you know, they can do lots of study that they can do for free nowadays if they've got internet access. Um, and they should really try to um, absorb as much information in English as they can. They should o open their minds to the language and try and read newspapers, watch videos, anything that they can do in English. They should do some practice tests, research and practice again. What that means is that they should practice the test and mark it. And if they find that they've got some answers wrong, instead of thinking, oh, got it wrong, I'll try harder next time, they should really think about, well, why did I get that question wrong? What don't I understand? What's the question about? And then go and do some more studies. So if they're having problems with their grammar, if they're having problems with tenses in English, which are very difficult, they should go away and study them again. If the problem is with vocabulary, then again, they should go back try to expand their vocabulary by looking at English language newspapers, etc., that they can use. They should try and have a, a system for their learning. Do you, do you, what, what do you understand by that? What, what do I mean when I say system for learning? Any? Yeah, yeah, but it, it, it's, it's, it's more than that, really. It's, yeah, it, they should have a they should have a structure to what they're trying to learn. So when they go and study every day, they should try and study in the same way. So they should split up the kind of work that they need to do into sections so that they can find it easier to learn. So maybe if they're going to study for one hour in the evening, they should maybe spend 15 minutes looking at vocabulary, another 15 minutes reading articles, uh, picking out words that they don't know, looking at the grammar, maybe 15 minutes for examination question practice, and another 15 minutes at the end maybe to review what they've learned. So they should do it in a systematic way. Um, this will help them to learn, this will help them to remember, this will help them to study more in the future because they will be able to follow a pattern. It's very important. They need to brush up on their dictionary and grammar reference skills. I know that all your students here get a Oxford Dictionary, don't they? Which is really good, and it's got a grammar section in the middle, with lots of, and, and then a vocabulary section. It's a brilliant book, and they should, really, they should really use it, and they should learn to use it. We're all teachers, so we use a dictionary a lot, but other people don't. They should learn how to use a dictionary properly, and that's something that you can help them with in, in the classroom. If they don't know what a word means, simple ways just to tell them. Why don't you get them to have a look at it in their dictionary, try and work out, look at the Spanish translation, put it into context, see if they can understand what the words mean that way. Make them think about what they're doing rather than just giving them all the information all the time. And of course, it's really important to review and revise at every point in the process of learning. If they've learned something, they should go back and look at it again in a few weeks' time or a few months' time to see whether they've, uh, they've really understood and that they can still use it. So these are just some basic tips that you can use for preparing students. <coughs> 